The first topic in this concept will be solving quadratic inequalities. We will first explain what quadratic inequalities are with examples and then we will lay out the process for solving quadratic inequalities. Then we will solve a practice question to form up your understanding of the approach. We will then move on to the second topic which is square root of an inequality. Now many students struggle with this topic but we will teach you an elegant and foolproof way to solve inequalities that require taking a square root. A practice question will follow this discussion. Finally, we will discuss the process of squaring an inequality and we'll do a practice question on the same. So let's get started. Sometimes on the GMAT, you may get inequalities involving x squared. Such inequalities in which the highest power of the variable x is 2 are known as quadratic inequalities. Examples of quadratic inequalities are minus x squared plus 4 is greater than 0. x squared minus 3x minus 4 is greater than 0. 2x squared minus 3 is less than x. Now we know well by now how to solve a linear inequality. By solving an inequality, we mean finding the values of x that satisfy the given inequality. But how do we solve a quadratic inequality? Well, don't worry. The process of solving a quadratic inequality is quite simple. These are the steps that you follow. Our first job is to make sure that the given inequality resembles the standard form of quadratic expression. A quadratic inequality in standard form has two features. The coefficient of x squared is positive and the right hand side of the inequality is zero. If we look at the examples here, we see that only the second example has an inequality in the standard form. Minus x squared plus 4 greater than 0 is not in standard form because the coefficient of x squared is negative. Likewise, 2x squared minus 3 is less than x is not in standard form because the right hand side is not 0. Let's see how we can convert these non-standard form inequalities into the standard form. Let's consider minus x squared plus 4 is greater than 0 first. How can we make the coefficient of x squared positive? by multiplying both sides of the inequality with minus 1. Let's do so. We know that multiplying both sides of an inequality with a negative number reverses the sign of the inequality. So we get x squared minus 4 is less than 0. Now this inequality satisfies both the conditions of the standard form. Let's now turn our attention to 2x squared minus 3 is less than x. We know that subtracting the same number from both sides of an inequality doesn't change the inequality. So if we subtract x from both sides of 2x squared minus 3 is less than x, we get 2x squared minus x minus 3 is less than 0. This inequality satisfies both the conditions of the standard form. Now after writing the given inequality in the standard form, we move to the next step which is to factorize the quadratic expression on the left hand side. So from the expression ax squared plus bx plus c is less than 0, you'll get something like x minus p into x minus q is less than 0. A zero point is a point where a factor is equal to 0. So let's find the zero points of x minus p into x minus q less than 0. We put x minus p is equal to 0 and get x is equal to p. Similarly, by putting x minus q is equal to 0, we get x is equal to q. So the zero points of x minus p into x minus q less than zero are p and q. We plot p and q on the number line. We are assuming that p is greater than q. That is why we have shown p on the right hand side of q. As you notice, these two zero points divide the number line into three zones. Now, starting from the top right of the number line, draw a wavy line that passes through both the zero points. The given inequality will be positive in the regions where the wavy line is above the number line. And the given inequality will be negative in the zone where the wavy line is below the number line. So if the question wanted us to find the values of x for which x minus p into x minus q is less than zero, the answer will be q is less than x is less than p. And if the question wanted us to find the values of x for which x minus p into x minus q is greater than 0, the answer would be x is less than q and x is greater than p. Let's now solve a question to practice this concept. 
The question states that if x plus 6 is greater than x square, which of the given inequalities must be correct? Now the given inequality is not in the standard form. We know that subtracting the same number from both sides will not change the inequality. So let's subtract x square from both sides. We get x plus 6 minus x square is greater than 0. Now the equation is still not in the standard form because the coefficient of x square is negative. So we multiply both sides of the inequality with minus 1. We know that doing so will reverse the sign of the inequality. We get minus x minus 6 plus x square is less than 0. Now we can rearrange the terms and write x square minus x minus 6 is less than 0. Now we have the equation in the standard form, so we are good to go to the next step. In step 2, we will factorize the inequality. We are well versed in factoring quadratic expressions by now and quickly notice that x square minus x minus 6 can be factorized as x minus 3 into x plus 2. So our inequality becomes x minus 3 into x plus 2 is less than 0. Now in step 3, we will plot the 0 points on the number line. What are the 0 points here? The factor x minus 3 will be equal to 0 at x is equal to 3. The factor x plus 2 will be equal to 0 at x is equal to minus 2. So the 0 points are 3 and minus 2. Let's plot them on the number line. Finally, in step 4, we will draw a wavy line starting from the top right of the number line which passes through all the 0 points. The regions where the wavy line is below the number line will be the regions where the standard form inequality is less than 0. So we can say that the inequality x square minus x minus 6 is less than 0 holds for minus 2 less than x less than 3. Looking at the answer choices, we see that option E is the correct answer. If you are given an inequality x square is less than c square and are asked to find the possible values of x, how do you do so? You may be tempted to take the square root of the inequality, but do not do it. Solving an inequality such as x square minus c square by taking square root on both sides is prone to errors and silly mistakes. Students often forget to consider the negative square root or they get confused about what inequality sign to use for the negative square root. A far better way to solve such questions is to follow the process we outlined for quadratic inequalities. Because after all, the inequality x square less than c square is a quadratic inequality, isn't it? So, we will follow the same four steps as before. This inequality is currently not written in the standard form because the right hand side is not zero. Now we know that subtracting both sides of the inequality with the same number doesn't change the inequality. So, subtracting c square from both sides of the inequality we get x square minus c square is less than zero. The inequality now is in the standard form. So we move on to the second step which is to factorize the quadratic expression. Factorization is really easy in the case of x square minus c square. We simply apply the formula a square minus b square is equal to a minus b into a plus b. So the inequality becomes x minus c into x plus c is less than zero. Our next step is to plot the zero points on the number line. What are the zero points here? When we put x minus c is equal to 0, we get x is equal to c. And when we put x plus c is equal to 0, we get x is equal to minus c. So the 0 points are c and minus c. We plot them on the number line. Finally, in step 4, we draw the wavy line starting from the top right hand of the number line and passing through both the 0 points. We know that the inequality will be negative in the zone where the wavy line is below the number line. This happens for minus c is less than x is less than c. So there we have our solution. The given inequality x square is less than c square holds for the values of x in the range minus c is less than x is less than c. The big takeaway from this discussion is that instead of taking square root of an inequality, you should solve it in the manner of the other quadratic inequalities. It's time now to solve a practice question. The question reads, if x and y are variables such that x squared is less than 1 by 4 and y squared is less than 16, which of the following expressions are correct? So let us first solve the inequality x squared is less than 1 by 4. We know that the first step in solving a quadratic inequality is to write it in the standard form. The inequality is currently not in the standard form because the right hand side is not 0. 
We know that subtracting 1 by 4 from both sides of the inequality will not change the inequality. Doing so, we get x squared minus 1 by 4 is less than 0. Now that our inequality is in the standard form, we are ready to move on to the next step. In step 2, we factorize the inequality. Now 1 by 4 is equal to 1 by 2 whole squared. So we can use the formula a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b into a plus b to factorize x squared minus 1 by 4 less than 0. We get x minus 1 by 2 into x plus 1 by 2 is less than 0. Now in the next step, we will plot the 0 points on the number line. The 0 points in this case are 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2. So here we go. The two 0 points divide the number line into 3 zones. Finally, in step 4, we draw a wavy line starting from the top right of the number line and passing through the 0 points. We need to find the region in which the given inequality will be negative. We know that this will be the region in which the wave is below the number line. So the inequality x squared is less than 1 by 4 is true for minus 1 by 2 is less than x is less than 1 by 2. Let us now solve the second inequality y squared is less than 16. In step 1, we will convert the given inequality into the standard form by subtracting 16 from both the sides of the inequality. We get y squared minus 16 is less than 0. In step 2, we will factorize the inequality. 16 is equal to 4 squared. So here as well, we will use the formula a square minus b square is equal to a minus b into a plus b to factorize. We will get y minus 4 into y plus 4 is less than 0. Now in step 3, we will plot the 0 points on the number line. The 0 points in this case are 4 and minus 4. So we mark 4 and minus 4 on the number line. In the end, we draw a wavy line starting from the top right of the number line and passing through the two zero points. The inequality will be negative in the zone in which the wave is below the number line. So the inequality y squared is less than 16 is true for minus 4 is less than y is less than 4. Now that we have established the range of possible values of both x and y, let's look at the three given statements. Statement 1 says that x is less than half. Now this statement gives you the impression that x may even have a value such as minus 4. However, we know that minus 4 is not an allowed value because it lies outside the range minus half is less than x is less than half. So statement 1 is false. Statement 2 is false. Statement 3 is true. You are given an inequality a is less than b. Now fill in the blank a square blank b square. Did you say obviously the answer is less than? Well, don't be so quick. Just like taking the square root of an inequality, squaring an inequality as well is a tricky thing. Of course, there are only two possible answers here. Either a square is less than b square or a square is greater than b square. That is either a square minus b square is less than 0 or a square minus b square is greater than 0. Now a square minus b square is equal to a minus b into a plus b. So either a minus b into a plus b is less than 0 or a minus b into a plus b is greater than 0. Now we already know that a is less than b. So subtracting b from both sides of the inequality will not affect the inequality and we'll get a minus b is less than 0. Thus a minus b is negative. Now a minus b is negative. a plus b is positive. So given that a is less than b, if a plus b is positive, then a square is less than b square. That is, the sign of inequality will remain the same upon squaring. If a plus b is negative, then a square is greater than b square. That is, the sign of inequality will reverse upon squaring. Please note that this result holds true even if the given inequality is a greater than b. The sign of the inequality between a and b doesn't matter. If a plus b is positive, then the sign of inequality will remain the same upon squaring, whatever that sign may be. And if a plus b is negative, then the sign of inequality will reverse upon squaring. Let's now solve a practice question that applies this concept. The question reads, positive integer x is a multiple of 16 and square root of x is greater than or equal to 10. Which of the following can be a value of x by 4? Now we are given that square root of x is greater than or equal to 10. Both the left hand side and the right hand side of this inequality are positive. Therefore, the sum of two terms, square root of x plus 10, will also be positive. 
Now we have learned that if we are given an inequality between a and b and the sum a plus b is positive, then the sign of inequality will remain the same upon squaring. This means that squaring the inequality, square root of x is greater than or equal to 10, will not change the sign of inequality. So let's square the inequality. We get x is greater than or equal to 100. Now since the question asks about the possible values of x by 4, we need to express this inequality in terms of x by 4. We know that multiplying both sides of an inequality with the positive number 1 by 4 will not change the inequality. So we get x by 4 is greater than or equal to 25. Thus, x by 4 is greater than or equal to 25. But is that the only piece of information we can deduce about x by 4? Well, we are also told that x is divisible by 16. This means that x is an integer of the form 16k. Now x by 4 is an integer of the form 16k by 4 is equal to 4k. So in total, we have surmised two bits of information about x by 4. It is an integer of the form 4 into something and it is greater than 25. Now, In the given answer choices, only answer choice D fits both these criteria. Therefore, the correct answer is D. With this, we have completed the concept on quadratic inequalities. Now, quadratic inequalities is one of the topics that most students find tricky. But we hope that working with us in this concept has given you the confidence and command over this topic. Good luck!